here we have the signature and purpose of our function and one example. In this example, the input has three distances between stations, so there are four stations, so the output we want has four cumulative distances. In general, the output should always have one more number than the input. If we follow the template for processing a list, then in order to process this list, we should process its rest. So let's write a smaller example for this rest. In this new example, there are only two distances between stations. It's as if Ashmont didn't exist and the train departed from Shotwood instead. So the expected output is a list of three cumulative distances from Shawmut. Now, unlike many other list processing functions you have seen, the numbers in this expected output don't appear in the longer expected output for the longer input. This makes it a bit hard and a bit inefficient to turn the output for the rest into the output for the whole, like the template tells us to. So it's tempting to make the expected output for this rest of the list start in Ashmont, nevertheless. That will look like this. But it's impossible to design a function that passes both of these tests because the function only has its input to go on. So when it gets an input with a bunch of numbers, how can it possibly tell whether the beginning of this list is the beginning of the train or somewhere in the middle of the train line? How can it possibly tell how far down the train line the beginning of this list is in the input? It feels like we want our function to use not only its input, but also some additional information some context, some history about how it got called. We want our function to remember its past as it works through the list. That's what an accumulator does. An accumulator is not a new feature of our programming language. It's rather a way to use the language we already have. The most important thing about using an accumulator is to write down what we want our function to remember, what we want it to accumulate. This is called an accumulator statement. It should describe what to accumulate, not how to use or change the accumulator. Besides writing an accumulator statement, we need to split our function into two. We're still going to have our main function, but we're going to add a helper function whose signature and purpose is like the main function except the accumulator becomes an additional input to the helper function. So the signature has to say what kind of data the accumulator is. And the purpose has to include the accumulator statement. And we usually put slash A at the end of the name of the function because A stands for accumulator passing. And we need to distinguish the helper function from the main function. As soon as we write the header of the helper function, we should put the name of the accumulator input in the accumulator statement. Again, the accumulator statement should describe what the accumulator input is, not how to use it or change it. Both the main function and the accumulator passing helper function still need to follow the design recipe, so both of them need examples. The helper's examples are where we get to illustrate how the accumulator affects the output. So we can take the impossible example that we wanted to write for the main function and turn it into a good example for the helper function by adding the accumulator input that was missing before. We should also take the fine examples of the main function and turn them into also fine examples of the accumulator passing function by adding what the accumulator should be initially at the beginning of the train line. All right, so here's what we're going to do to define these two functions. For the main function, we're not going to follow the list processing template. Instead, we can just trust the helper function's signature, purpose, and examples and so we could define the main function just by calling the helper function with all the same input plus 
the initial accumulator input. As for the helper function, that's where we're going to follow the good old list processing template. There's a twist to this template when we are using accumulators. In the recursive call, which should now be to the helper function, the accumulator input to the recursive call might not be the same as the accumulator input we received. It might not just be total. Instead, it might be some update applied to total, which we'll address shortly. So let's use this template to write more examples, like we did at the beginning of this lecture. We already have two examples that are related by the template in that way. When our function gets this list input, it's going to process the rest of the list, but with an updated accumulator that keeps track of the distance so far. What happens when our function gets this list? Well, again, the template says to process the rest of the list. So let's write an example for that. Again, we're going to update the accumulator in the example. We started at 0.62 miles. We just traveled 0.58 miles. So the new accumulator, after going past these two stations, should be 1.2. Let's keep going using the template. What happens when our function receives this non-empty list? The template says to process the rest of that list, which is empty, and the new accumulator after traveling one more mile is gonna be 2.2. And the result should be the rest of the desired result from the slightly larger list. And this also reminds us that we should have examples where the input list is empty for both of our functions. We just wrote one for our helper function. Let's also write one for our main function. So these examples illustrate two points. First of all, each example for the main function, for example, this one, should give rise to a whole bunch of examples, a sequence of examples for the helper function, because the helper function is going to call itself in order to process a list that was originally given to the main function. Secondly, as the helper function processes its input, it's going to update the accumulator. And that's why when we write down the template, we should remind ourselves that the accumulator might need to be updated. Now we're ready to fill in the template for the helper function. If the list is empty, that's what this example tells us how to handle. We should return a single element list that just has the total distance so far in it. If the list is not empty, like in all our other examples, First, we know how to update the accumulator. We need to add the beginning of the input list, such as 0.58, to the current accumulator input we received, such as 0.62, in order to get the recursive calls accumulator input, 1.2. So that means we should take the first of the list and add it to the total we receive to get the total we pass to the accumulator. We still need to describe how to get from the recursive calls output to the overall output. In other words, how do we get from the recursive calls output to the overall output, or from this recursive calls output to the overall output? The answer is we need to count on an extra element at the beginning. And that extra element is simply the accumulator input that we got. So let's write cons total. That's it. Let's test our code. Excellent. 